Thank you to our sponsors, La Palm Royal Beach Hotel Special Malt, Yaz Washing Powder and Yaz Sanitary Pad, to Hooch Con and Choco Flakes, to NASCO Electronics. Are you ready for your NASCO moment? Yes. <laughs> Somebody wants something and said, oh my God, what is this thing? But it's your luck. So we will be having our NASCO moment today. Thank you going out to GTP New Style. Thank you so much for my fabric. Ophelia of ABS Collection, thank you for putting it together beautifully. To Fix Faces by Rami, thank you so much for my makeup. And you can get Rami's number on the screen. Thank you to Roji Jemima for my lovely braids. I'm really enjoying it. I've been rocking it, eh? Maybe I'll rock it for two months. Because it's so easy and comfortable. Roji, thank you so much. If you want to go to Roji, go to Dakum and Kokompe Eye Clinic. She is there and she would fix you some braids or cornrow, whatever you want. And Roji is even employing people. Roji, I need to take that number so I can call it out so you can go to Roji and she'll give you a job to do. Each time people see celebrities, all they see is the glitz, the glam, and they do not even consider if these people really did have a smooth ride to wherever they are now. Sometimes some celebrities do not really want to share their struggles to encourage others. But today, my guest has assured me he's going to be as transparent as possible to let you know that it's no easy ride to that top. My guest is my friend, he's my brother, He's my husband. Please let's welcome the rap doctor, Ochiame Kwame. This is where to share it all. Come and place for one and all. Let's hold each other's hands and stand tall. Set yourself free. Tell it all. That's my husband. Yes. Hey, last, last time I'm checking in. <laughs> Do I even know you? Yes, I know you. Talk to the head. Is this a Kwame? Why feel? Why a jet? Oh, wait. How can I get one for a hotel? Same in himself, Baba. And you're more life. Yes, yes. So, a bushy head, you're for life. I need a crown, what to say? Oh, my papa. Kwame, we, we know you. You're very out there. You say it as it is, but today you told me you're really going to open up and tell us things. Yes. I, f from growing up, you know, your mother was a teacher, your father was educated, but you said life was not that rosy. At all. How unrosy was your life? Well, how do I put it? So, my father was uh, one of the people that had the opportunity to study, uh, so he actually studied some, I think, chartered ac accountancy at a level in Italy through scholarship. So I saw my teacher mother and an accountant father. I was expecting that we would live at Asokwa, but I grew up at Fantino Town. So, ah, <laughs> That's like chocolate and it's legal. Exactly. I, I didn't quite get it. But growing up, so I was, I was uh, born at Ashtown and then when around my after my, around my formative years, we moved to Asafo. Then we moved to Fantino Town. And then, in fact, if you know Kumase, if you are born in Fantino Town, and by God's grace, you turn out to be able to to become mm -hmm. prominent. And so many people in that uh, neighborhood became doctors, lawyers, accountants. And, but it is not. It's a tough place to grow up. It's a Fantino Town was exactly in the middle of Kumase. On the right mm -hmm. is Kejeti. It's like five minutes walk. walk. Uh, about three minutes walk from Fantino Town is um, Timem, where the Amrobes are. Across Fantino Town is Asafu. That's also a hard place. <laughs> On the left, you go to Amikum. You know, so it's in the heart of Kumase. And it is a place for, how do I put it? So maybe upper lower class, you know. People who are not quite Dada B, but are not Dada B. You Dada know, B is trying to jump, move, exact, move to the next level. That's the type of area that it is. And there you find um, some of the children 
learning trade, some of them uh, smoking drugs, some of them arm robber. So you could actually know someone from team member that you know that you play with every day who is an arm robber. You know what I'm saying? And you know he's an arm robber. Exactly. And it's and cool. It doesn't matter, you know. So so they, in that community, they had the student boys and they had the hard guys. And the challenge growing up in such a community and making sure that you experience it in full, but you only take the, the part of it that is functional for your life's focus. Mm-hmm. That one was a miracle. Wow. So at that young age, how were you, because kids are easily swayed, how were you able to keep your focus? Well, so I'll say that uh, because, hmm, that's, a, that's a, a good one, but like the Bible says, train the child the way you should go and you not depart from it. So. I was born in a Methodist church, as you know. Mm-hmm. You know, whip you, persuade you, whatever. You have to go and to a doom. And will put you exactly. right. You have to go to a doom to go and, and, get the, and get the word of God. I think that one played a role. And also, from the type of parents that I had, father was very strict. And then my mother was Libra, but extremely loving. You know, so when you are out there and you are in your early teens about to break your virginity, you are thinking, ah, oh, how is my mom going to take this if she gets pregnant? When you are out there in the group and someone is passing fire, and you take that fire, you're about to puff it. You are thinking that if this thing passes through my head, what will my father do? You know, so- <laughs> He'll beat you Exactly, up. so little, little, little <laughs> things like having immediate role models who you do not want to disappoint. disappoint. You know, I think, apart from the God factor, that one, but if I say that I, from the time that I was young, I was focused and I knew that I wanted to be this, 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 that's a lie. I went through life like any reckless young person. The, my only inhibitions were my immediate parents that I didn't want to disappoint. But did you always know you were going to take this rap thing serious? How, how did it start? Okay, so when I was five, my, my mom taught me a poem. And now this poem, I went from house to house to house to house in Ashdown reciting this poem. And every time I recited the poem, the poem gave my audience a certain level of happiness. And that happiness that I gave them gave me a certain satisfaction. So growing through school, like growing up, I always found poetry interesting. And then also my father had written books. And out of all his books, I would find poems in there. Mm -hmm. And rap music was also emerging, you know. So I lived in the house that I lived in at uh, Fantin Town School, Copacabana. It used to be a Saturday night club and then became Copacabana in the early 80s. So from Monday to Monday, music is playing every time. Yes. You know, and at two o'clock, music is blaring. Now, fast forward to 91 or 92, I met this fine young man who happens to be your husband, (laughs) you know, at a table tennis place that, now I've already told you, Francine Town is tough. There's this guy who owned a barber shop who will beat you up. His name was Onana. You know, Onana was one of those, uh, you know, Guys, I don't want to go into details. I'll get trouble. <laughs> when, <laughs> we will look for you. <laughs> exactly. You know, so Onana is one of those guys. He had a barber shop. And then every time he's cutting your hair, you can smell some herbs on his finger, you know. And you, <laughs> then, <laughs> you <laughs> then not say. Well, so Onana had a table tennis beyond or by the back of his, of his shop, his wooden shop. Mm-hmm. That's this extremely confident young dadaba boy has come to also play with the hustlers like us. And during that table time, it was sort of, it was uh, prohibited in my house because it was cha-cha, you know, so it was called lose to pay. So if you lose, you pay. Okay. Uh-huh. So this guy is beating everybody. And then I, I play pa, I play table tennis better than the, the current. <laughs> you know, so I, I went to play with him. I, I had never met him. And then we played. And then when we played, I scored him. And so... And he didn't have money, but he was so confident that he had come to beat everybody and go home happy. Now, after I scored him. Give me my money. No, Onana was going to beat him. 
<laughs> so I used the money that I had, which I had been given to go and cut my hair. I used that money to pay Onana. So I said, now you are confident, too confident. Now I have used my money, money. for my hair. When I go home, they will beat me. So cut my hair. <laughs> so I was, as we were talking, he said, well, I'm a baba, I can cut you. He took, he took me home. And for the first time, I entrusted my head and hair <laughs> in his care. The total stranger. <laughs> total stranger. And then he cut my hair. He cut it nice. When we got home, we didn't know even Unana didn't do it. And then we became friends from then. And when I met him, I think we were like 16 or something. He had already written a book, Rings Don't Marry. Very affable. He had traveled. His father was um, into buying uh, stock, cocoa beans and things. So he moved from... To go to Atemali, to this one, to this one. He lived mm-hmm. different places. He had more, though he was like a year older than me, had much more experience, you know. So we became friends. He could write prolific. Was he a chrome number? Prolific. Which is the He was a prolific writer, you know. So we started rapping. And so at that time, what will happen is that he will write a rap. And then I will go and deliver it because I had been delivering poems since I was it's five. five. <laughs> you know, so I'll go and deliver it. And then they call me Whiskey. And so we delivered it. Uh, the rap music had become very popular. And when, so, and whenever I went on stage, it was amazing. Until a point where there were too many rappers. So we said, mm-hmm. okay, since there are too many rappers, why don't we go on stage together so that we'll be a group? So instead of one person rapping, we'll rap in unison. Mm-hmm. And then we did it for a while. And then after a while, the thing came down. Then cut to 97, we found a producer, Andrew Pokuamakwa, who lived in the same house with me. Okay. And he was um, the, the landlord's cousin who lived in the same house with me. So he produced us. And then we did the first album and the balling started. So uh, how stubborn were you guys in Fantinuta at the time? To tell you the truth, we were not very, very, we were not that bad, but one thing that you couldn't put past us was the girls. <laughs> That's what I did. And what did say? Yeah, we didn't smoke. We didn't do none of that. Mm-hmm. But we, we like girls. Okay, know. so let me, let me share this funny thing. <laughs> so, you know, every time I touch Kofi's arm going to his neck, there is a mark. It's like almost a scar. It is a scar. Yeah. And I'm like... What is that? He says, Biswa Chame Kwame. You know, he's never told me the story. Really? He's like, Biswa Chame Kwame. How did he get that mark? So I went to... <laughs> <laughs> There's this guy in Fantinu Town, and uh, his name is Kwesi Peches. Kwesi Peches. Kwesi Peches, when he was young, he used to be Peche Peche, you know, when we were growing up. <laughs> And then he started smoking grass. Then he became a hard guy. Hey. Yes. So that's why sometimes... Kwesi Peches to Kwesi Exactly. You know, so I went to take his book. I think, I don't remember, it was an exercise book or a magazine. I don't remember. I, I wasn't the one that got stabbed. I won't remember. <laughs> so, so I went to take his book. And then this guy wanted his book back. And I think I had given the book to somebody Someone else. Knows. So he wanted his book back. I didn't have it. But because of the amount of swag that Kofi and I had in Fantinita, we were like impeccable, you know, because of the swag that we had. I think, I don't know, it was a born out of jealousy or it came out of just annoyance. Anger. This guy was trying to fight me. He wanted to beat me up for the book. So I was working with Kofi at that time. So Kofi stepped in to try to break up the, the, fight. the fight. And then he started hitting him. So, you know, Kofi is not uh, an easy cookie, you know, to crack. <laughs> so Kofi started beating the guy up, not knowing he had a, a shoe. Uh, that thing that they used to sew shoe. Oh, the shoemaker's needle? Yes, the one that is anchored in front so that they can use it to pay. So he put it through his neck. Aish. Yes, so that is the story. So Kofi actually got stabbed saving me. He's never said he's like, oh, much. I'm going to be sad. No. Yes, Kofi <laughs> purchased. Who became hard from just <laughs> no, Kwesi did this. Yes. Ouch. So that is the story. What did your parents say? I mean, Muko Diagra, Bana. Exactly. The blood. The, well, so at, we rushed. There was a, a hospital around. So we. And the, that the thing elders, has a crooked edge. Yes. So it was stuck. 
It was stuck there. It was dangling. Then wow, one second, wow, one second. That was the the thing that was echoing in the neighborhood. So we took him to the hospital and they cut it out. Wow. Yes. Why am I stubborn? Yes. So you see, it's not just Jesus that saves people. There are selfless guys around. <laughs> <laughs> Who <laughs> gets stabbed with a needle for you? Restoration. We've come a long way and we're constantly on the move. We go bravely, confidently, gracefully. For we are the gracious ones. We love, we share, we give. We are the inspired ones. We laugh, we teach, we live. Our mothers and fathers, our sons and daughters, our brothers and sisters of every day and forever. All of us are a gift to each other. We live a life that's never ending. Our beauty is a never fading grace. GTP, timeless. It's a beautiful day. I'm gonna make most of it It's a beautiful day yeah. A day to share with you You'll make my world go round yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really got me saying Nice girl Experience the wide range of top quality and affordable electronics, phones, tablets, home and office appliances from NASCO. Wide wings and leak guards. Yes, sanitary pads give you maximum comfort, hygiene, and protection in a resealable pack. We've got Yas Protection. Yes, sanitary pads. Maximum protection, maximum confidence. Don't worry, we've got Yas Protection. When I'm down and I need something to chew me out, well, it's an exclusive drink, vanilla flavored and so refreshing. Special mode. Special Guess what? Special Mots makes me feel okay. Special Mots. Even you in the system, you for drink and see. Special Mots. Special Mots makes me feel okay. Special Mots. So clean and smooth. Oh, yeah, enjoy yourself. Special Mots. Special Mots makes me feel okay. Special Mots. Guess what? Special Mots makes me feel okay. Special Mots. Even you in the system. Special malt, feel special. I love to eat a tasty breakfast in the morning. Something delicious and healthy, filled with vitamins. That's my day right, makes me so bright. Kiss my body happy. Let me tell you about what I eat. It's my secret. Hooch, crunch, crunch, complex. Hooch, crunch, crunch, complex. Hooch, healthy for everyone. Restoration. Secondary school. I, I when you guys were shooting up with fame, I know there was school in the process. Yes. Enjoying all the fame and knowing that we, it's possible that we're going to be big stars in the future. Did it affect your academics? <laughs> If I say I knew or I had the slightest idea that I was going to be a big star, I it's not. I was that type of child that every time they would call my parents to school and say, Obey, I'll go one in this. I'll go one in this. That's what you bro. Exactly. So I was getting nines in my math, not because of the rap. I was getting my nine before. When I was in <laughs> class one, 
my mother, whose friend was a teacher called, uh, I think, Mrs. Buama, who had taken excessive interest in me. So everything, who are teacher, say, who papa been, who are say, you know. So, so every time I went to school, I was afraid. So because of that, it affected my studies. I also think that I, I'm a little dyslexic in my, so I, even now I've gone to school a lot. I still can't write, you know, yes, but that there are so many sharp people who are dyslexic, who have dyslexia. But at that time, they didn't diagnose it properly, mm -hmm. and they just misschooled it for a growing and so, mm -hmm. you know. So going through school, uh, so when I I went to, um, I remember that between um, going to secondary two and three, they wanted to repeat me. But my father, knowing that I would become great, you know, he put me to. So the, to answer your question, that did I know that I was going? No, 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 no. I was just having fun. I, there was nothing that I was interested in growing up except mm -hmm. the arts, except painting or writing a poem or writing rap or performing rap. Math, science, accountant, all that, I just grab that. You know, I wasn't interested. So I want to think that it, it was a rap that affected me to fail my O-level exam, but I had been failing, <laughs> you know, from, from class one, so. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> a failing became a hobby. Yes, yes, yes. So I remember that when I finished my O levels, um, I did another one and another one. World War Two. Yes, and then World I went to I went to what you call uh, like uh, we used to call it a REM cis uh, form, you know. So I went to Bantama um, SD where I did my O levels and my A levels had to course it was a private, you know, cis form, but. Something happened to me. When I completed my O-level, there's this guy in Fantino Town again called Lord Marcus. And Lord Marcus was the coolest guy in the world. He was tall. He, could, he, he had a basketball at that time. Wow. You know, he had big shoes. He had girls. He smelled nice. You know, so Lord Marcus, I went to him. We all used to go to his house because he was the coolest guy in Fantino Town. Mm -hmm. So I asked Lord Marcus to tell me more about rap. And then he looked at my resort and said, Abonde in epe de 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 <laughs> you know, so he would teach me a metaphor and then he would give me a James Hadley Chase book. I said, go and underline all the metaphors in this book and bring it back so in four days. So, when, so I'll go and I'll not be allowed to come to his house in four days. And then when I come, I've underlined all the metaphors. Give me a simile, an oxymoron, you know. So by the time I was going, writing my sis form exam, mm -hmm. I was exposed to language, had understood, to the world, the, those books that he forced me to read had expanded my horizon. And so I passed my A-levels. Wow. Yes, wow. And, yes, I did, I did. I passed a B, C, E. You know, I got a B in a government, C in economics, and E in geography. I told her I don't like geography. If you let me do African traditional religion, they said I would have had an A. An A. Yeah. But I passed my, my A-levels mm -hmm. sharp at once, you know, because Lord Marcus, who wasn't even my relative, had found one thing that I was interested, interested in, in to lure me into bringing all the other things that I hated. You know, so I, I, I always delve up my heart for Lord Marcus. When, when the fame started, were your parents disappointed? Did they expect more of you? No, I remember that when I started rapping and I started coming on TV, this is around 96. I think the first time we came on proper TV was Embassy Double Do in Sunyane. And then we did, I went to perform and then I came on TV and my mother's auntie who had raised her called my father's work, excuse me, called my father's job and said, Obana woman has started to you, so obey high. Obey high. I think that what my, aunt, my grandma was telling my father was that you let your son sing. He is going to abuse drugs, mm -hmm. and, you know, but my father, knowing the type of son he had raised, said, ah, so he understood the high from, from physical yeah, elevation. elevation. Uh -huh. So my mother and her side, they were very worried that I was doing rap mm -hmm. and this, but my father was extremely understanding. I remember that one time around 94, he had followed me from the house to, um, to Golden Tulip, where we, we used to rap at Apata, I say, at two in the morning to come and see what we're doing. So even when- I, Just to be sure. Just to be sure that we're not, so he, but between 14 and 15, when we started rapping, every day he used to beat me because I would take off my clothes, throw, put them in a the bag and throw it away and pretend I was going to learn, wear my swagger clothes and go and rap. 
you know. So I'll come home around two in the morning, and he'll be waiting with Lenny his cane. Ben Kwan. Exactly. So he had beaten me every day over the rap until that day when he came to see that it was a decent poetry, and he is even a poet himself. And from that day, he supposed. So when we moved to the US and my younger brothers were started rapping, Kunta and Stone started yes, rapping. Stone. My father would call me for directives. So where should we place them? Mm-hmm. And then I, we had another friend called Agbozi. So let Agbozi drive them around in my car, take them to the competitions and make sure that when they win, the money get comes home. Mm-hmm. You know, so that was how it started. But he made me make a promise to him that if I am going to rap, or become an artist, I should make him a promise that no matter what, I at least get a first degree. So after I had become popular and I had grown up, mm-hmm. I still wanted to fulfill that promise because he had died. You know, So that is the type of upbringing that I had. Okay. But another story is that, you know, when Kufi started Love FM, my father was the general manager at Fox FM. Okay. And, you know, so I'm thinking I've grown up with this guy, this web. If he can be a popular presenter, I can also be a popular presenter. So I quickly went to take the drive on Fox FM, not knowing oh, that, once, um, not knowing that he, he, you needed talent to be able to do it. <laughs> so I sat on the drive. So one day my father called me and said, "Your presence on the radio is giving me management issues." <laughs> So I will have to let you go. Your father fired you. Yes. <laughs> but, and then he changed into three, but rap, you know, they out a party. Call, call, rap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, focus. <laughs> yeah, focus. That guy is so yeah, cool. Focus. Exactly. You know, so that's the type of father. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about America. Oh. After winning all the awards, I mean, you guys were the it's, we're the, the ish. ish. The I mean, ish. We're the ish. yes. Just in the prime of it all, why did you guys decide to leave it all to see greener pastures? Well, pastures are here and I'm For me, I know Kofi um, had all his siblings, senior siblings in America. So I think when we got to America, he had found hope. But for me, <laughs> it was three things. The first one was the bridges. I saw beautiful bridges that I had never <laughs> seen before. New York Bridge coming here. To, the, that was the first one. The second one was a girl. So there was this girl that, uh, you know, had come. So I remember that we were in London. This girl bought her tickets. And then everybody's begging me, wait, and let's go back to, no, 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 I'll go to America. And then that girl went to see the girl. And the third one, was because I didn't know where the next paycheck was coming from. So 21 years old, I made a hit. And I, I remember that before we left, we were going to, we were traveling with Daddy Lumba. We did a US tour with Daddy Lumba and then we came back with, right, we did with Kwebi Entry. And then we came back and went to live there. Or we didn't come back at all. And the thing was, I didn't know where the next paycheck was coming from because I had already milked the money that mm-hmm. was coming from Masanaba. I had spent it on flashy girls. I had bought a rickety car and rebuilt the car like 10 times. I would spend the money on going to the fittest. I would spend the money on buying jeans. Mm-hmm. And we didn't make that Staying much. Staying cool. Yes, being cool, being young. We didn't make mm-hmm. that much money either. You know, so the, and then I started growing. I started seeing that, wow, so I have to start taking care of my girlfriend who is going to become my wife. So if I'm in Ghana and I don't know where the next paycheck is coming from, at least when I go to the U.S. and I wash dishes or I carry dominoes or I do construction, mm-hmm. every month I'm going to get $1,200. And that is a steady life for mm-hmm. me at that time at because that time. my father had died immediately. We went to the U.S. about two months later. I mean, my father had died, you know, so now... Kunta Stone also. What's your responsibility? Yeah, exactly. Calling me senior brother, produce us. We are bugger. JBB. You know, so it was a, a much safer choice mm-hmm. for me to live in the US. So, three things the bridges, the beauty of the place, of the place, a girl, a girl, and the fact that I didn't see. I, I didn't see what the music industry had to offer me. At that time. I didn't see. Because so I told what, you. So uh, what happened to that girl? 
Oh, <laughs> oh, uh, twenty two. What are you? What do you expect? Well, I remember that. Uh, sometimes twenty two, you never know. I I know, but so uh, what happened with the girl? The girl was very very bad girl, and she was very bad. And I remember one time, uh, <laughs> well, Papa, she used to live with us, and Kochiami Kofi had visited me from Columbus, and we're there with the girl. Uh, the girl had gone to hear somewhere that Papa she was talking about, and so it was snow. It was in somewhere December, and this girl was was sucking Papa she from the house, and Ochan Kofi was just there playing his piano. <laughs> he was just there playing his piano. And then whenever the thing goes up, he will laugh and say, "Me dey me piano." <laughs> You know, so the long story is that the relationship didn't work. It work. And I became sort of homeless uh, in New York for a while. And then... Oh, so Papa She's issue affected you too? No, no, the girl was going to break up with me when Papa She had come <laughs> on. You know, so when, when after that, I, th- I think about a month later, we broke up because it wasn't going to work. Attention. Yes, and then I was sort of homeless. And the only relative that I had that lived in America was my, my young uncle. And I called my uncle and said, he lived in Newark. I said, can I come and hang with you? He said, there are seven of us in this single room. It's even illegal. You can't come. You're wild. You know, so I, fortunately for me, there's this uh, guy called Chief Kusi who had a house. He had a, a house, a condo. And then he and his wife lived downstairs. And upstairs, he had rented it to this guy. Unfortunately, the police came for the guy because he was selling drugs. And so I had the apartment. You to know, yourself. To myself. So I went to hide there quietly. And I started thinking. thinking. So I found a job at um, Whole Foods Market selling oranges. The beauty about it is that it was on 42nd Street. So the Ghana people will, will take a train, <laughs> will take a D train, to come and look to at catch, Ochiame Kwame. To catch the four train, only to come and look at Ochiame Kwame selling oranges in his apron. And if it were to be today, that Instagram would have been right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God that, uh, you know, it's, uh, social media was... Yeah. And so it got to a point where one day Kofi called me. Kofi was living with a senior brother in um, Columbus, Ohio. So he called me and said, Charlie, this New York thing is not working. You're in Mbuguasi, so come. I paid him a visit, um, and then I liked the place. So we started our life again in Columbus, Ohio, and in his brother's single room. And then we moved from his brother's room to his sister's basement. Oh, now, now the, the, because the basement was bigger. Now, there's a, a, a very amazing story about that one. So his sister was married to this fine, nice, half-caste man. We didn't like to talk. And you know me, I like to talk. If you don't stop me, you can talk. <laughs> so every time the, the, bro, the husband is gone, me, I'll be keeping the children happy and talking to her. this woman is laughing. I didn't know what had happened. Uh, <laughs> what had happened? There was something strange happening. One day, so this woman used to work in a hospital. So when she returns from the hospital, she will pick me in the morning and go and drop me before she comes. And... As you know, Abruchi, so whilst the woman is coming, the man, man is, is going. going. So they don't even see each other. So I think this day, the guy wanted to have some before he leaves. And then here is the woman who is trying to take me to work before. By the time <laughs> she gets back. You know, so, Spoiling the so whilst I was getting ready, I head up this. Now, ah, boy, we are the a woman and left. Woman is your bass fro. Which was a legitimate concern. Because mm-hmm. if you're going to live yeah. in America and work, you have to learn how to get the bus. You can't come to America and become that bus. You know, so... And my, my work had to start at around 6.30. So I would walk. I, I quickly finished, found some warm clothes and walked by the fight at the hall and then went to stand out there about a one-minute walk to the bus station trying to catch a bus. And then if you've lived in Columbus, Ohio before, you know that you can't find a bus even at 7 o'clock. It's not New York. So I stood there, and it was raining. 2nd November. It was raining. It was snowing. It was in the morning, 5.40-something in the morning. I stood there till 6. Then I realized that no bus is coming. So 
if I am to stand there and wait for a bus that will come at mm-hmm. seven, I didn't even know the bus schedule. This woman mm-hmm. was treating me like a, her own brother, you know. So I started walking to the work, workplace. So I walked and walked and walked for, say, let's say, between where I was standing and my workplace was like from circle to Osu. Hey! Yes. Wow. In That's the morning. Distance. Yes, in the morning at that time, when it's raining, it's snowing. So I walked and I got under a fourth path. And then I stood there and I cried. I sobbed. I cried. I cried. I cried. And I asked God, why are you doing this to me? And then I heard God speak clearly in my ear. He said, you are a fool. <laughs> what do you mean? You, you want to rap all your life. That's the only thing you know how to do. And I have made you successful. You are taking awards, you've recorded the number one song, and you have come here to wash dishes. What is wrong with you? I heard him clearly. So I stopped crying, and then I walked to work. And that day, you know what happened? When I got to work, they said that uh, they didn't have work. They, uh, they did, they did, I was only to work for three hours and go back home. So Ocham Kofi, who was doing security at that time, <laughs> Had clothes from work. And so he came to pick me. I don't know if I gave him the full details of what happened that day, because I don't know if he knows the story. He came to pick me and we went home. And that day, I prayed to God that me, uh, me, I find you suspect already. So if you don't give me a job that I don't need a car to go to, I won't worship you again. Then the next day, I had already put in applications. applications. The next day, a job called me, which was like one minute walk from our house. Hey. Yes, because he knew I was going to mess with him. <laughs> you know, he knew. He knows how I, I roll. He was supposed to answer that prayer. So the next day, they called me and they asked me, when can you work? I said, I can work today. Now. Now. You know, so the next day, I started working. Then that place that I was working, I was working as a chief dishwasher. And the, 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 what they do at that place, it was called Creative Cuisine. They cook for stadium. So let's say a match mm-hmm. is, in, uh, the, is at uh, Ohio Stadium, then they will cook for them. So they used to use big dishes. Kofi told me that there was a time he came to your workplace with Michael Jamna <laughs> and they were looking for you. <laughs> they found you. Then you responded, oh, (laughs) 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 Only for them to find you in a big washing dish. Yes, in a big, so you need a, a, you need a a ladder to crawl out, you know, and I used to work so well that the people loved me because I didn't complain. I knew that that was my option at that Mm -hmm. time. I had started opening my imagination. Mm -hmm. I was reading books on Krishna, Christ, Muhammad. I became interested in African traditional religion. I was beginning to grow up because in soli- your scope. Exactly, in solitude, you can find wisdom. So I saw that this is what I'm doing now. But from that day, under the, under the cargo bridge, I had decided I would come back home to Ghana. Mm-hmm. Kofi was also going through the same things. So we decided that we work hard, buy equipment, and then come home. So I bought a one-way ticket. You also bought a one-way ticket back to Ghana. I yes, remember. Yeah, maybe you. Yeah, maybe you. There was this beautiful girl that I was trying to get in my corner at that time. Her name was, okay, if I mention it, it's not good. It's not her story. It's my story. It's your story. Yes. So this, the girl's mother liked me. So be, a week before we came, the girl's mother called the, some of the elders, the Ghanaian elders in the society to come and talk to me that this Ghana that you are going, don't go because you don't have green card. You don't have this. You don't have that. And my hair was this big. It wasn't because I didn't want to cut it. Mm. Too. I didn't have money for the baba. <laughs> <laughs> my really? hair. Really? Exactly. So all that Afro swag. The Afro swag. Yes. Hey, it's like thirty dollars a cut. You know, thirty dollars a cut. What are you talking about? So, I said I'm going back. And I remember that after buying the tickets, when I got to Ghana, I had a thousand dollars in my pocket. So I went to Avgo to take out my things, camera and studio equipment, blah, blah, blah. And I was left with a thousand cities. And then I bought a Samsung phone for four, for 400. 
And then I took a bus. Oh, I don't know how we got to Kumasi. And so when I came, when I got to, I got to Kumasi, I was left with 200 cities. Two million? Yes, two million. Boga. <laughs> you know, I've gone through all this from 1999 to 2003 and come back to live in my mother's armpit with 200 Ghana. Ask another question. <laughs> Restoration. We've come a long way and we're constantly on the move. We go bravely, confidently, gracefully. For we are the gracious ones. We love, we share, we give. We are the inspired ones. We laugh, we teach, we live. Our mothers and fathers, our sons and daughters, our brothers and sisters of every day and forever. All of us are a gift to each other. We live a life that's never ending. Our beauty is a never fading grace. GTP, timeless. It's a beautiful day. I'm gonna make most of it. It's a beautiful day. A day to share with you. You'll make my world go round Yeah, yeah, yeah It's really got me saying Nice girl Brings home happiness Experience the wide range of top quality and affordable electronics, phones, tablets, home and office appliances from Nasco. Wide wings and leak guards. Yes, sanitary pads give you maximum comfort, hygiene, and protection in a resealable pack. We've got Yas Protection. Yes, sanitary pads. Maximum protection, maximum confidence. No worry, we've got Yas Protection. When I'm down and I need something to chew me out, well, it's an exclusive drink, vanilla flavored and so refreshing. Special mode. Special Guess what? Special Mots makes me feel okay. Special Mots. Even new in the system, people drink and see. Special Mots. Special Mots makes me feel okay. Special Mots. So clean and smooth. Oh, yeah, enjoy yourself. Special Mots. Special Mots makes me feel okay. Special Mots. Guess what? Special Mots makes me feel okay. Special Mots. Even new in the system. Special malt, feel special. I love to eat a tasty breakfast in the morning. Something delicious and healthy, filled with vitamins. That's my day, right? Makes me so bright. Kiss my body happy. Let me tell you about what I eat. It's my secret. Hooch, crunch, crunch, of flex. Hooch, crunch, crunch, of flex. Hooch healthy for everyone. Restoration. <laughs> Was your mother worried? She didn't know. <laughs> I think I was going to tell her that <laughs> I, only brought, I only brought two hundred. So when you see a bugger, you can't see. You provi- mostly you provide for them for a while. Exactly, and also you can't see from from. Um, you can't go into his pocket. As soon as you see his skin, you see the guy is looking good. Then you know that he has come well. You know, but I remember that we lived at Meduma. You know, so uh, Fadi. So I will catch a trotro. I'll catch a trotro. Uh, to Tafo and then catch another one to town and you know so this also went on for a while and then one day when I was standing there looking for my trotter you know I used to wear earrings mm-hmm. 
looking for my trotter. There was this madman wearing red, red, Sandy. This madman sitting by the gutter, he said. Ah, I said, I free me so And then he said, man going to And I didn't mind him. He said, Ninja. <laughs> I didn't mind. He said, Cratchy. Cast no more fine, no so I didn't mind him. I was so arrogant about what he was doing. So fortunately, I don't know where Kofi had gone to. He came to pick me up that day. From he was but traveling with the senior brother or daddy, I've forgotten. So they picked me up and then we went to his house. And then two days later, I started thinking Thank of you. what the guy had said about my earring. And then one day I took it off and I never wore it again. Yes, the madman told me to But then you my answer. Yes. <laughs> so how tough was it for you, your comeback? Wow. My comeback was tough. Very, very tough. One, because I didn't start it the right way. I had let emotions and the fact that I was hungry. Hungry to be popular again. And also hungry because I didn't have money. And I come back to live with my parents and responsibility on me and you know I let that guide my decision to go solo and I remember that Kofi and I had like total different approaches mm -hmm. personality wise so I think that he is melancholic and I am a sanguine you know so I want to go into people yeah he wants to sit somewhere and produce something nice for the people from a distance you know so that personality of his and mine had created a conflict when we came back. Coupled with the fact that, like everybody who knows me knows I compromise. But I was so hungry and so growing at that mm -hmm. point that I couldn't compromise again. So, so I say, let us go out there and play shows. He says, the money is too low. Let's wait for the right money. Then I say, look at the people that we left. Tick tack, book back, bravo. They are playing shows, they are living. Then you ask me, how much do they make? Don't you want to make money like Daddy Lumba and Amachi Dede? What they do is they put the time in producing amazing content consistently. Then they get paid for it. Then I say, but I'm hungry. <laughs> wow. Me to me. Me to me, pain. You know, so this thing went on for a while mm -hmm. until it got to a point that the people will call, when they call him for the show, he said, we are not available. So when they call me, I say, I'm available. They are going to play it myself. <laughs> so because I had to survive, you know, so I played it for a while. The thing that I did that was a mistake was I didn't tell him that this is because of this mm -hmm. conflict between us. I want to start my career. So I started recording and some gossips amongst our friends went to tell him. So he got angry. So the, the solo project faced emotional challenges from, from the get go. Mm -hmm. And then the money challenges. How am I going to get money? to fund the recording. Because at that time I lived in Kumasi, JQ was the biggest producer. Mm -hmm. You have to get a car and have the swag mm -hmm. and you know, come. One person that was very instrumental in my solo, making sure that my solo career stood was Nanama Mac Brown. She did amazing. She would drive me from Tamani to Takrade to, for recording. And she was the most popular mm -hmm. artist at that time, um, actress. So I think it was her and Susie William. And so some of her So that friends, also gave it a push. That also gave it a push. The fact that I was in a relationship with her, the fact that she was, you know, she would introduce me, oh, this is my friend, this is my friend. And then all of them were holding me, so creates, mm -hmm. you know, Sefakai, all of them were her friends who were holding me up little, 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 gave me that, you know, platform. But did you feel you betrayed the friendship? Oh, of course. Because, you know, th this is the first time Kofi is hearing this. When you were recording, you were living in my house. When I come to Accra. Yeah, when you yes. come to Accra. And I knew you were recording. And I would say, because you guys have built a relationship over a year. I shouldn't be the one. Over years. Yeah. I shouldn't be the one to break it to him. You guys, you've rolled. So find a way. Then, like you said, <laughs> said it before I said it before you could because I remember it was so hard for you. You go like, yes. okay, is you like Kacheno? It's better so better than Abonte. Then you begin to look like 
A betrayal. A betrayal. There was a time he called me, he said, ah, yes, I am a recording. So Kwame are recording, but someone said appear to project be, I think, um, was it appear to, that project with Paul Kese? Yes, it was a uh, execution diary. Execution diary. diary. So, ah, I don't know my name so more you, but that was how it, we all felt difficult about talking about it. So over the years, have you been able to squash Oh, everything? yes, 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 yes. I think it's a it's a thinning process, mm-hmm. you know, because I didn't understand that, ah, you are my brother. I'm dying. And you have this extreme strategy. Why are you not coming to my place? And mm-hmm. he's thinking that we have talent. We can do this properly. Why are you selling it for cheap? cheap. You know, so... I think that's conflict. But over the years, we've spoken about it. We've had laughs about it. We've cried about it. And thanks to God, our relationship is amazing now. Thank God. Yes. So going to school after all the Fs, then finally getting an A, going to America to wash your dishes, to sell your oranges, going through all the fame, the women, the swag and everything, and coming back to Ghana to start your first degree. How difficult was it? Because I'm sure you were almost like Papa in the class. I'm telling you, it was difficult. Uh, I remember that when I got, I went to write my entry exam. I promised my father I'll I'll get a degree at least. When I went to write my entry exam and I passed, the Friday that, uh, the last Friday before the Monday that we would start school in July, I drove brothers to to Accra for a music music, um, you know, festival. And then after the music music performance, Kunta said he wanted to eat uh, Honest Chef at Circle. So I was going to drive into Honest Chef, and some guy came to drive. Um, then Akumi, Akumi, Akumi's ex husband okay. came to drive through my car oh. from Vienna City. And then my only BMW, this BMW was so troublesome. We used to call it 666, <laughs> the Antichrist. <laughs> I drove the BMW into a, a pole. There's a pole around circle that I, I mean, boom, that's what I want. That's to show you uh, the level of, Impact you know. Of the- so I left the car here with the fitter and I took a bus home. And Ochiame Kwame, I'd become very popular at that time. Mm-hmm. Ochiame Kwame coming back to school for one whole semester. I used to go in a trotro. That was the challenge for me. But, you know, the, whenever a trotro enters a university, it becomes a shuttle. The name changes, you know, so we used to take a shuttle. So I will take a car to take Janshin and take a, a, a trotro. A shuttle. Yeah, take a shuttle to school <laughs> and walk to go to, to lectures for one whole semester. And people can ask, I know, you know, you know, but I knew what I, what I wanted. So I was studying um, account sociology and the knowledge that I was getting was so amazing. And then I started becoming popular again. I think after a year, Mm -hmm. I started becoming very popular. And so now the challenge is between going to do a performance or doing a performance on a Sunday Mm -hmm. and coming to school tired on on a Monday, Monday, you know, things like that became the challenge. But I, 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 every time I find new knowledge, I remember about uh, two months ago, I called Kofi, I said, "I'm I'm going to do a PhD. I'm starting a PhD in July. And he said, no, no, pardon. I said, who's that? What the queen? What the queen? You know, so, but every time I find new knowledge, I find a new epiphany. I find a new horizon, right. you know. So when I, I had met that knowledge, all the things that I was learned that I never had, learned about sociology, learned about culture, find out, you know, I was so happy to go to school. Mm-hmm. So when I graduated from tech, though I was a Chiamme Kwame, I think that out of all the four years, I made school only four times. Wow. And yes, and I graduated with the most disciplined student in the whole KNUSD. I got wow. the, yes, I got the certificate for that. Because people are expecting that I'm a chamber kwame, I'll become she mm-hmm. Because along the line, I got a hit. And then I bought big cars and I started the swag again. Yeah, yeah. You know, so people were expecting that, oh, okay, you do this, this, mm-hmm. this. But no, no, I was so focused on going to school. Because after I had the first degree, I, I, I had a quest for another one. one. I need to go to school and get and a get second. Because, because I love I love to, to learn new things. It wasn't very, very, very challenging. Because um, some of the lecturers, like um, Professor Charles Mafu, I'll be in Nigeria doing a performance. Then he will email slides to me. Oh, he'll give me nice. the opportunity to Skype with him. 
in the evening after mm-hmm. lecture so that he would teach me. I had, yeah, people like wow. Ejaku Onimo who would, you know, understand that I had a performance, come back, he would even take me to his house to teach me what music lessons he had given the class. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people like Dr. Arthur who would, I, would go, I could go to all the time to expand my horror. So I had amazing lecturers who were a little older than me so they could feel, mm-hmm. you know. So I, I went, going through tech, I didn't have that much challenges because at that time too, I think the thing that was going to worry was the women, but I had a serious you girlfriend had, already. Yeah. So I, I I didn't have the well, opportunity to I, I think this has been the most unveiling interview you've done. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, some of the things I'm telling you because you know, if I don't tell you, we'll bring it out. So let me just <laughs> tell you. <laughs> It's a NASCO moment. <laughs> NASCO is one of our sponsors, and okay. it, they give the opportunity to all of our guests to pick an envelope. And when you pick it, whatever it's in the envelope becomes yours. If you pick a thank you, you go home empty handed. Masuko Serena. Me what? Night eye vision. <laughs> <laughs> Be much too. Me too. Me too. Elephant one. We not. We. I should be so. Why be a one day so now? I can't thank you. I can't share my share. Where we are? You have stolen inside. Nasco blender. Oh, Nasco. Oh, Thank you very it. much. Can it make juice too? With your juice now, you drink. When you drink, you have a blend. I drink, I drink. Oh, I'm so grateful. Yeah. Yes. So that's from nice. Nasco. This is very oh, yeah. nice. Very, very nice. So you take the paper. I don't want the paper. <laughs> Thank you to our sponsors, Nasco Electronics, La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, Yas Washing Powder, and Yas Sanitary Pad. Ladies, the purple pack is out. Kwame, <laughs> stop cracking me up. Ladies, the purple pack is out. During that time of the month, if you know your flow is heavy, go for the purple pack. It's longer and it can last throughout the day without leaks. So go for the purple pack of the Yaz Sanitary Pad. To GTP New Style, thank you so much. To Special Malt, you are simply amazing. I'm also saying thank you to one lady. Nkwame, this lady, she does so well. She's constantly here. She doesn't fail. And I want to just honor her today. Mausi. Mousy, you have the opportunity to choose from my guest envelope for your consistency. Let's see what she wins. <laughs> yeah, you can open it. She is constantly here every week. So she's got a natural hair straight now. Can we have it? Seven in one. She won the seven in one. So as we wait to do her presentation, thank you so much, Ophelia of ABS Collection, for my outfit. To Fix Faces by Rami, thank you for my makeup. To Roji, Roji, thank you so much for my hair. You're simply amazing. You've helped me down all these years, and I really, really appreciate you. Studio audience, mwah, love you to the max. Always do remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. We'll see you next week. I'm Stacy. This is where to share it all. A common place for one and all. Let's hold each other's hands and stand tall. Set yourself free and tell it all. Restoration.